Hello everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So, this is going to be your general energy reading for your Wednesday, your hump day. Wait, hold on. September 8th? No, September 9th, 2020. Please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is a reading dated for the 9th of September does not mean that it absolutely has to resonate for you at that time. Whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you in that moment. Also keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. So, <clears throat> I'm back. Hi guys, I had to take, I had to take a break. Um, as you guys knew or saw before, um, you know, I, I posted it in the, in the community tab, um, but it's been a really rough three months for me. Um, I've been going through a pretty extreme transition, one that I am incredibly grateful to have the opportunity to do to begin with. So like, there we go. Um, but, you know, I moved and everybody knows moving is difficult, um, but I moved to a different country <laughs> and I'm going through a phase right now where I am very quite starkly aware of how out of my comfort zone I am right now um, and I'm, I'm, I'm having to learn a new language which I wanted to learn anyway and part of the reason why I came here was because I could immerse myself in it and learn it so I'm working on that but there's been a lot of things I have needed to come overcome emotionally in order to really be able to do this so the last few days um, has been necessary and I know last week that I did say that I wasn't going to do morning coffee all week, but yesterday I had finally gotten to a place where I could actually like do readings again. Like I started the monthly readings. I did Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio yesterday. I'm going to continue today and do more. Um, but then after that, I was like, maybe I really can do morning coffee. So here we are. I might even do happy hour tonight. I'm not sure yet. Um... Uh, Spirit just said, mm, that might be a little bit of an overstretch. Yeah, okay, I get it. So, I don't know, maybe, we'll see. Um, but I'm definitely going to be continuing with the monthly readings, for sure. Um, but uh, I just want to talk about this for a little bit. The last few days have been a moment where I can just ground and release and work on settling in emotionally, but also physically. Um, I've spent the last few days getting my my office or my studio here like kind of put together. Um, <clears throat> thank you, uh, thank you to all of you that have been helping me, but also thank you Stella for all of your help. I mean, you're amazing. Um, I got most of everything put together. The last thing I'm waiting for right now is my desk, and once my desk gets here, I'll be able to set up my PC and, and like my instruments and, and my speakers, like for real, for real. And I'll be able to start writing music again. And which is, which is something that I haven't, I've been putting on hold until, until I can have my space set up. And I know there are some of you out there that are going to say to me, Oh, you don't need to have your space set up to do that. Mm -hmm. No, I need my space. I need my, I, I need my flow. I, I need, I, you know, so whatever. Um, so that's what I'm waiting on now, waiting for now. But that's what the last few days has been, has been me settling in and really working on, you know, getting the flow of my apartment together. Um, I also expanded, I, I expanded my herb garden, which I love. Um, I had a few moments, a few mornings with my herb garden in which I just sat there and meditated and connected with the herbs and, and the plants and all that. And it was, it was, it was beautiful. It was so helpful. It was so grounding. It was so cleansing and healing. So here we are. Yeah. Um, yeah. Doing, doing morning coffee. I'm excited about it. I'm really actually kind of excited about it. Look, my mug broke today. Do you see that? I was cleaning it and I was holding it. Right. And I was just kind of like, I had just washed it. So I was like throwing some of the water off of it and the, the handle broke off in that tiny little spot. Do you see that? That's so crazy. This is my favorite mug. This is actually the 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 OG morning coffee mug. Um, 
when I first started doing morning coffee, there was someone that had found me through the channel that I had become friends with. Her name was Sana. I don't know if you still watch Sana, but hi. Um, and you know, I was thrown out there. I want, I need, I need recommendations for mugs. And she sent me this one on, she sent me the, the, the link to this one on Amazon. And I was like, sold. And this has always been this rainbow mug, rainbow unicorn mug has always been like my, my standard go-to morning coffee mug. I love this thing, <laughs> but it broke you guys. At least it's still functional. Like I can still hold it, but I was kind of sad. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Oh. oh, there you are. Let's pause for a second. Sorry about that. I found a mosquito and I had to do it in because I didn't want it flying around my apartment biting me. Damn mosquitoes. Okay, anyway, so um, with all that said, let's just, let's get into this, right? Yeah, sure, okay, cool. Hi, spirit. <laughs> Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Wednesday hour. Hump day. August. No, geez, I did it again. Not August. September 9th, <laughs> 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, kids, we're gonna give this five shuffles. Let's see what we got here, yeah? Cool, man, cool. <laughs> All right, here we go. One for the collective for our Wednesday, September 9th. Two, didn't I do this? Didn't I do that on the last morning coffee I did? Because I remember a bunch of you, uh, a number of people said it's definitely September, not August. But I don't, maybe, I don't remember, I don't remember. This is three. I just, I don't remember. Sorry, guys. I, I made a mistake. What do you want from me? Like, come on. <laughs> this is three. For the collective, this is four. By El Colectivo. And this is five. For our Wednesday, September 9th, 2020, yeah. So this is how my setup looks right now. And when, um, this is also what the, uh, what the monthlies are going to look like so far. Um, yeah, I hope you guys like this. I, I, I did happy hour. Was it happy hour? Yeah, I did my last happy hour this way. You guys really liked it, so. Um, I really like it too. It allows me, it allows you to see more of me and it allows you to see what's going on on the table with the cards, which is ideal. So um, I'm going to continue expanding, but this is where we are right now. Yay. All right, here we go. Interesting. So far, we have the Ten of Swords at the bottom of the deck, right? Yeah, the Ten of Swords. Um, and for those of you that are wondering or questioning, this is the beautiful creature's tarot. Yeah? Okay. Um, so you have the Ten of Swords at the bottom of the deck, but then you have the Four of Cups with the Knight of Wands. And what I want to say about this is, like, this is, first of all, this is conflicting energy. This is weird. It's like um, someone has been activated, maybe. I do see the Knight of Wands as an activation energy, right? So this is like the light worker. This is the torchbearer. And what I'm feeling here is that uh, I want to say somebody is stuck between a rock and a hard place, which is interesting because I said that for one of the readings yesterday. I don't remember who it was. Um, I did Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio yesterday. I don't remember who it was, but... For someone, for, for one of those signs yesterday in that monthly reading, I said the exact same thing. It's like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, 
you have a desire, uh, there's a desire to take action, Knight of Wands, and yet there is a, re a reluctance to do so, Four of Cups. I feel like someone is activated in some way or someone wants to move forward in some way. Someone is desiring to, to, to move forward towards something. But the strongest thing I'm getting with that is that family is holding you or them back. You have the Ten of Swords at the bottom of the deck with the sun underneath that, ah, and the King of Cups. But then you also have the Devil underneath that. Um, I'm going to get one more shuffle here, but or one more pull at least. But um, what this is saying so far is that there is some sort of situation that has come to an end. There is a relation, maybe this is a previous relationship, or maybe this is... Um, maybe this is the life that you had, the life that you lived before this activation here, Knight of Wands. And I feel like it's some of the reality from whatever it is that ended here that's kind of causing someone to hold back Four of Cups and not take up an opportunity. However, I do feel like there's family involved here for some of you, okay? You have the Sun with that and then the King of Cups. So uh, some situation has come to an end, Ten of Swords. And there's a bright new opportunity in front of you, or there's just like better days in front of you. But that's going to require you to stand up for yourself. King of Cups. That's going to require you to be emotionally mature enough to look at this devil energy here and, 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 and just get straight through it. Queen of Wands. And to basically... Basically, stay in your alignment, whatever it is you want or whatever it is you're moving towards, whatever new is move, new, whatever new reality is coming through for you here. You need to have the emotional strength, King of Cups, the emotional maturity to look this devil energy in the past, in the eye. But this, what I want to also say is look at this devil energy from the past. Look at it in the eye and regardless of what the devil has to say to you or regardless of what the devil energy might try to do to you, you've got to stay in your alignment. Queen of Wands. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to get one more pull here on this. What else, Spirit? Mm. Wow. <laughs> Okay, you guys, at the bottom of the deck now, you have the Knight of Pentacles. Slow and steady wins the race, okay? Um, but with that has come Judgment, the King of Swords, and the Six of Wands, you guys. There is victory here. There is victory here. And what Spirit is saying through this right now is that, look, there is a call that's being put out here. You're being called to, to enlightenment is what I just heard. Or you're being called to something greater. And literally all that is required is for you to be as logical and, and, and grounded and um, objective as possible. Like whatever is holding you back from moving forward with some sort of inspiration, some sort of desire that you have, um, whatever some sort of activation, some sort of light work, light working mission, if that resonates with you, whatever is holding you back from this, you have got to look it squarely in the eye, squarely in the face and say, what is the truth about this situation? What is it that I really need to do in this situation? Especially with that King of Cups that came out earlier, what does, what is my heart guiding me to do? In terms of or in relation to this calling, judgment, this higher awareness, this higher wisdom spirit just said. Because when you follow through with that and you remain as objective as possible and you set the record straight and you do what is right for you in this moment, you will get a victory, six of wands. Crazy thing about this though, you already have a victory here. Six of wands, the six of wands is already here. However, it, when I, when I was pulling, it fell off, it fell out of the deck and fell into my lap. 
So I don't think many of you are really that aware of just how victorious you already are, regardless as to whatever steps you need to take or movement you need to move or, or steps you need to take to move forward are whatever the, no matter what those steps you are facing, you already have a victory here. Okay. At the bottom of the deck is the Knight of Pentacles. Oh boy. And then underneath that is the Lovers. There is a choice that needs to be made here, you guys. I mean, sure, you could be talking about, we could be talking about love, but whatever. Ultimately, the Lovers is talking about a choice. I say this all the time. And quite frankly, you guys, especially with the King of Swords here and Judgment, it's like you've got to make a choice that's best for you here. The lovers, the knight of the king, I'm sorry, the lovers, the king of swords, and the judgment. Where does your heart lie? Where does your heart want to move? What does your heart want to move towards? We could be talking about a relationship here. It, 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 that's entirely possible. But This is a general reading also, but like, you know what I mean? Like, I hope this is making sense. I feel like I'm talking in tongues, <laughs> but anyway, okay. Um, yeah, let's get into a little bit of clarification here. Do I want to use this deck? No, I want to use this deck. This one. Oh. No, we're going to use this deck. This is the Dreaming... No, not the Dreaming Way Tarot. What is this? Oh, this is the Crystal Visions Tarot. Yes? All right. Five shuffles here. Just to start. And then we're going to start clarifying. Here we go. One. Okay, three. I think some of you are reluctant to move forward with whatever this new circumstance is or new situation is for you. This is four. Um, because it's probably going to be a long road. Knight of Pentacles. And it's almost as if... It's... The, <laughs> It, it, it's this situation. It's it's the type of situation where like you literally just have to start moving, because that's the only way you're going to progress at this point. But I think this is five. I think you guys are seeing the long road ahead of you, the obstacles that you're going to have to overcome, or just the effort that's going to need to be put into it. And you're kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> All right. Um, Let's see. So let's start by clarifying the Four of Cups and the Knight of Wands here. Ooh, that's enough. Okay. Uh, it's quite a bit, actually. We'll talk about it. Hold on. There's that Four of Cups again. Okay. At the bottom of the deck is the sun. Wow. Whoa, you guys. Whoa, 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 you guys. Okay. Uh, so first things first. Four of Cups again, but this time it's with the Hermit. So your, your, your... There's a lack of introspection that's going here. That's happening here. In some cases, some of you don't want to do this deep diving, don't want to do this soul searching because it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. You're right about that. Others of you, ironically, don't want to come out of hermit mode. But you have, with this, you have temperance, the page of pentacles, the queen of cups, and death. All right, so this is very interesting. I feel like, I feel like for this reading here, we are talking about a new wave of empaths. 
a new wave of individuals that has, has awoken to or is in the process of awakening to their empathic abilities. And this is, uh, this is what you came here for. The Queen of Wands and the Six of Cups. This is in direct alignment with you. This is why you chose to incarnate here at this time on the earth in order for you to allow your empathic abilities to shine and be the individual that you are. But you don't want to come out of hermit mode. Some of you. Or maybe you're just afraid. Or maybe you're thinking, I, I don't think I'm ready yet. And the universe is saying to you with judgment here, the universe is saying to you, yes, of course you're ready or we wouldn't be calling on you. Welcome. <laughs> it's time to get up now. <laughs> it's time to come out of hiding now. You're ready for this. Everything is going to be okay. The sun. All right? And yes, you're absolutely right. It is a long and hard journey. You have to take it step by step. You can't rush anything here. Uh, and with this awakening happening, now I'm kind of feeling like what you're perceiving is the struggle, the, the amount of work, how, how difficult this type of thing is. Helping people awaken in their stubborn ass bullshit. No, I get it. I get it. But at some point, you're just going to have to bite the bullet and get to it because ain't nothing to it but to do it. And that's what the Knight of Pentacles here says. You just have to get moving. Take it step by step. No one is asking you to rush anything. Take it step by step, day by day, moment by moment, instance by instance. I Honestly, I think I want to title this reading, Welcome to the Club. <laughs> and then some of you are like, oh, God, I don't know. Do I really want to be a part of this club? <laughs> like that, the feeling that I got after that was quite ominous, but y'all will be fine. <laughs> okay, so with that said, let's talk about this. We have the Six of Wands, remember, the Six of Wands with Judgment and the King of Swords. Yes. Um... And if this is not if this is not someone actively awakening to their empathic abilities, this is someone that is awakening to the truth of their emotions, what they really truly feel. Um, I feel like this is something that could possibly be an awakening of the divine feminine in within someone um, that probably normally would identify with like the masculine. Awakening to their own inner feminine. But this is a major change, a major transformation, death, okay? It is a major transformation for somebody. And, and, and someone is kind of like reluctant to really move forward with it. And, and that's okay. It makes sense. This is fairly new to you. So, okay, don't worry about it. You'll get, but that's why, that's why the Knight is, of Pentacles is saying, just get moving. That's all you got to do. Just get moving. Step by step. You don't have to take any huge leaps or bounds at this point just start taking your steps temperance patience understanding but there is a new level there, there, there is someone has been right temperance with the page of pentacles there is a new level that someone has come to um, there's a greater sense of balance or harmony within a greater sense of inner union potentially that's a, spirit just said that's allowing you to open up to your empathic abilities queen of cups or maybe you're just more, more emotionally aware. You don't have to be awakening to empathic abilities. You also don't have to be like stepping into some big light worker mission. But you could be awake, be more aware of what your of your emotional reality, which would put you in direct alignment, Queen of Wands, with what it is you truly want on a heart level, or what it is you want from um, from the space of your inner child, Six of Cups. Something that you may have really wanted from your past, even. All right. So now let's look at the King of Swords, Judgment, and the Six of Wands here. So now. <clears throat> we have the Page of Cups now at the bottom of the deck. 
we also have the Ten of Cups, the Two of Pentacles. There is family involved in this somehow. I keep, I, I felt that in the beginning and now I'm feeling it again with the Ten of Cups. Okay, so we're looking at the King of Swords, Judgment, and the Six of Wands. There is something that someone is being called towards that ultimately is going to help them reach some sort of emotional fulfillment, Ten of Cups. But there is a balancing act that needs to happen here. Two of Pentacles. It's like you need to balance... If this does involve family, what I feel like is you need to balance the reality of your family with the reality of your new situation, wherever it is you find yourself, however it is you find yourself aligning or in alignment or whatever. There is a, there, I do feel like there's a contrast. There's a contrast between the past or there's a contrast between your family and there and that reality and where you find yourself now, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, maybe even all of the above. With that, wow, it's funny because strength was at the bottom of the deck when I started, after I did my shuffle and I looked, strength was at the bottom of the deck. I didn't say anything, but here it has come again. You have strength with the magician. So what this is saying here, the magician is saying to you, well, the magician coupled with strength, but the magician is saying to you that you have the power to manifest exactly what it is that you want, but you have to be strong enough. You have to have enough wherewithal within to balance your reality with the reality of your family or the reality of people that you want to maintain within your life or need to maintain within your life. And that is exactly where the lovers comes in. Because you've got to make a choice for yourself. You've got to choose the right path for you. If you're going to honor these people or whatever it is that is the, this family dynamic or this community dynamic that the Ten of Cups represents, if you want to be there for these people, well, you're also going to have to be there for yourself. How can you do that? How can you strike that balance, Two of Pentacles? You have the Page of Cups at the bottom of the deck here. <clears throat> and to me, that's kind of saying, don't allow this situation to get away from you, okay? Um, but it's also saying to really understand what you're feeling. Underneath the Page of Cups is the Wheel of Fortune. And then also the Eight of Swords. And there's the Knight of Wands again. Oh my God! And there's the Lovers again. With the Four of Wands underneath that. But, um, you really have to face, I think it was actually, it was Scorpio that I was saying this to um, in your monthly reading, but you really have to face your emotions here. You've got to get down to the nitty gritty of what it is you're really feeling in order for you to change your destiny and to break free from some sort of prison and to move forward with this activation or this inspiration that you have, you have to really focus on your feelings, understand them fully so that you can allow them to drive you forward, okay? You are, you have the power, the magician, you have the power. You just now have to have the strength to use that power. To use the power that you are awakening to. But you have got to be objective here, King of Swords. As objective as possible. That will lead you to victory. But quite frankly, Six of Wands, you have this victory already. I just don't think you realize it. You might be too clouded with the what-ifs. The possibilities of something going wrong, blah, 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 this, that, and the third. Don't worry about that. I almost want to tell you to uh, maybe rest and recuperate a little bit, meditate a little bit, allow the dust to settle a little bit, or just, just relax, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Okay. So... Let's wrap this up. I'm going to get our Oracle Guidance, but I have to start a new file first, so hold on a second. Okay. Oracle Guidance is going to come from Beyond Lemuria today. So let's do this and see what we get. All right, five shuffles. So that was one. Two. You like how the sun is coming through my window and shining on my face like this? <laughs> Three. 
three. Four. And five. Alrighty, kids. So, let's see what Oracle wants to get for today. To close this out for today. Okay, well, at the bottom of the deck, you do have Crown Chakra, the unlimited self. And that's also, this is a beautiful card, by the way, but that's also kind of ringing true towards what, uh, or with what the King of Swords, Judgment, and the Six of Wands is saying. Open your mind. You are unlimited. And that's why, and that's why Spirit is almost kind of saying with the King of Swords here, look at this as logically as possible. There's, there, I, I swear, what I'm feeling here for some of you is that you, if you really look if you really look with an objective eye, like just work to see things as they truly are in this situation, like see it for what it really is, not what others make it out to be, or not maybe even what you may have made it out to be, you'll find that there are some parts into this, to whatever it is that you're dealing with right now that just do not fit. And you've got to let that go. And don't hold yourself back. Don't allow yourself to be held back by saying, oh no, well, I, if I don't have this, then I can't, I can't survive. No, no, boo. No, that's some bullshit because you are unlimited. You are, an, you are an unlimited being, okay? Remember that. But you're, ah, Mount Shasta. Oof. Card number 37. Ah, wow, okay. Mount Shasta, your origins, the seeds that make you what and who you are, star beings, sacred power places, unexplained mystical phenomena, intuitive messages and downloads, dreams and visions. Um, I really just want to read, you know what, I'm going to read the whole thing. Because I'm sure some of you will find some, some definition. Okay, so ready? Aware that their entire continent would be destroyed, the Lemurians traveled to other parts of the globe. Mount Shasta has a profound connection with the Lemurian people, as it was one of the... As it was once... As it, excuse me. As it was one place they journeyed. There are many tales of multidimensional beings living inside the mountain and sightings and sightings of all kinds of unusual phenomena here. When I received the intuitive message that I would be writing and delving more deeply into the emerging theme of these cards, I had a strong vision to visit this mountain and channel a painting on it. After a range of synchronicities, I found myself there. The ambiance of this magical place cannot be denied, and the image you see on this card is what came through. Mount Shasta also seems to have a connection to star beings and portals to multiple worlds and parallel realities. On arrival at Mount Shasta town, I was involved in a Pleiadian channeling circle where I had a vision of the stars communicating with the mountain through light code and interconnecting glowing grid lines lay over the entire earth. I have experienced these luminescent grid lines before. I have been told I can put my hand into them and connect my healing light with all the other lights doing their work across the planet. During my time at Mount Shasta, I came to understand there have been many UFO sightings there, and I realized how connected the Lemurians were to star beings. Further research revealed several accounts of Lemurians being of Lemurians being of mixed origins from throughout the universe. This place holds many stories, and I had my insights, but it felt right to keep the imagery for this card simple. I felt as if what was depicted spoke beyond the mind, 
I was quite perplexed at what the meaning of this card would be. I knew Mount Shasta would be an important card in the deck, but I didn't realize how significant it would be until the following was revealed. I planned to include symbols of the 10 chakra cards that would activate the chakras, but I wasn't sure how. The creation of these cards has been a profound unfolding, and when I sought guidance, I received the message that the chakra activation codes were in this Mount Shasta painting. There was a symbol for each of the chakras, and you can find them on the bottom left side of the chakra cards. This image is the seed crystal that this whole deck is based around. So the definitory meaning here is, this card is about origins. It is time to honor and look more deeply into your ancestry, both your bloodline and your eth etheric lineage. Do you have an affinity with any star beings? Connecting with them might allow you greater insight into your traits, your strengths, and challenges. Perhaps you have a Lemurian connection. This card may also be encouraging you to visit sacred places you feel attracted to. They may have an intuitive message for you. Someone here, someone here is definitely going through an awakening. Judgment. Knight of Wands. Someone is activated. Someone is on a new path. Someone is ready to start glowing. That's beautiful. That's really, really beautiful. So there you have it, guys. Thanks very much for tuning in. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. Thank you for all the love and support that you've been giving me over the last few days, just encouraging me to take my time and yeah, I've missed you guys. I really have. Um, but anyway, I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Cool. Take care. Mm -hmm.